how we doing? Okay, let's grab these glasses. Alrighty guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Benjamin J, and this is the home and the hub of anything and everything manga and anime related in my life. Now, if you guys are new around here, I've just started to get into manga and anime towards the very tail end of 2018, pretty much 2019. As we are in the last few weeks here of 2019, I have been in this community for roughly about a year, and I have just started to collect and read manga on a consistent basis. Now today, you guys may have noticed this is a weird new camera angle that I am trying out, so let me know how you guys feel about it. But what we're going to be doing today is my first ever collection video. Now, I thought about doing this several different ways, and the one that I settled on was uh, I'm actually, because I don't have a dedicated bookshelf for my actual manga yet, that will come in early 2020, but I just haven't had the time to go, you know, bookshelf shopping, find the one I want that will fit in the space that I have, and so on and so forth. I don't have that yet, so what I'm going to do, you guys, is I've actually taken all my manga, I've put it on the table behind me, you guys will see it in just a second and what we're going to be doing is putting them all on my shelf and as I'm putting them on my shelf I'll maybe chat a little bit about them so on and so forth I don't want to keep you guys here uh, incredibly too long so we are going to speed things up a little bit through this video uh, but with that being said as always before we jump on into the video nothing has changed as always if you guys have any manga recommendations that I should be reading or anime I should be watching go ahead and drop those down in the comment sections below you guys always have a plethora of amazing recommendations for me to check out and I love interacting with you guys down below in the comment section. Another thing before we jump on into the video is if you guys aren't hip to my new social media handles that I have dedicated just for this page, of course uh, uh, links to those will always be found uh, down below in the description box. So go ahead and give me a follow uh, if you guys uh, want to follow me on uh, social media, whether it be on Instagram or uh, Twitter. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode. You know what, you know what, you know what? <laughs> I, forget, I forgot, I forgot. Um, I was kind of looking around here and uh, you know, I've been packing like the entire morning and uh, we're going to the airport later tonight and uh, you know what? Um, I need coffee, I don't know about you guys, but I need coffee, okay? like a really nice day here in uh, in Southern California here in Los Angeles and uh, let's go ahead and get sorting okay yeah. ah okay all right so let me just move this camera a little bit right so there is a lot of manga here on the table my boys okay a lot on the table and like I said in the intro we are gonna be doing an entire collection video okay now of course I don't have a specific order of what I'm gonna actually be putting on the bookshelves or book, yeah, bookshelves, or shelves on my bookshelf. You guys know what I mean. Uh, but I've cleared two shelves on my bookcase, okay? Now, that's not gonna be nearly enough room for this, so we're gonna have to be doing some stacking and some jerry-rigging, but uh, later on, probably after I get back off of PTO and I'm back in town, uh, early 2020, I will be buying a dedicated bookcase. I'm gonna put it, I have, I, I know the space where it's gonna go and so on and so forth, and it will be just for uh, manga, okay? But until then, we're gonna have to make do with the space that I have, okay? So 
it, that being said, I don't have a specific order of which I'm gonna put it in. And so for those of you that are wondering down in the comment sections below, I know a lot of manga tubers will, they'll either, or you know, organize their manga by author, like, um, you know, alphabetical order, or perhaps by genre, so on and so forth. I'm not really gonna do that. I think I'm gonna go by completed series all the way to non-completed series, or I really, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but it, it's really, this is really only like a two, three, four week fix, okay? A little band-aid. Um, and then uh, when the actual bookshelves come, then I'll put a little more thought into how I'm actually gonna organize them on my shelf. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into it. All right, you guys, welcome. Finally, we are getting down to it with the first series of the night. And what you guys are looking at is the Viz 1 and 2 editions of Maid Sama. Now, if you guys aren't hip to Maid Sama, it is personally one of my favorite shoujos. Now, I know a lot of you guys, you guys don't like this. I, I for sure, I've gotten in a lot of comments that, you know, you know, whether it be the cliche tropes, so on and so forth about the series. Some, some, some of you guys just don't like it, but I'm letting you know right now, if you haven't given it a shot for me personally give it a shot it's actually pretty good well what you are seeing on screen right now is the viz one and two editions so so far we are on five and six as of right now and i'm putting them on the lower left hand uh, corner of my shelves okay now i have the complete series for made sama so what you're seeing is the one and two editions so they are pretty thick which is really nice uh, one quick recommendation for you guys is buy these on sale. I bought these at full price and Lord, let me tell you, it was expensive. They do cost a pretty penny. Uh, that being said, they do look absolutely wonderful on the shelf. So if you don't know what Maidsom is about, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now those two main characters, what you're seeing on screen now, the girl's name is uh, Mizaki and the lead male character is Usui. Now basically what's happening is uh, Usui is pretty much the high school, you know, the, the guy that everyone wants in high school. All the girls want in high school, but here's the catch, okay? Mizaki is the class president of what used to be an all-boys high school, and she's the first class president that happens to be a girl, okay? So she's all about, uh, you know, very traditional uh, respect and boundaries and trying to clean up the campus, okay? But her dirty little secret is that she works at a maid cafe, and of course, Without a shadow of a doubt, uh, Usui does find this out, and that's what sparks the romance of the two, and it's absolutely an adorable series, okay? So quickly, we are uh, looking at volume 11 and 12. Now, I haven't gotten this far in the series. Um, I'm currently on volume, I think it was 9 or 10, so I should be finishing it pretty quickly, and then I will have a review up on this series. Eventually, it's just taking me so long to read, and I have so much new manga on my to-read list. Well, I'm trying to read like a perhaps a new shoujo, a new shonen, a new seinen, so on and so forth. Uh, and I'm just reading so many things; it's very hard to have uh, efficient time management. But here is volume 15 and 16. This is the penultimate uh, one and two series of the entire collection. So we only have one more to go. And you guys, just from the bottom of my heart, please check out Made Sama. This was in my first ever manga haul and uh, it's it's something to be proud of i'm glad that i do own this and this is the final volume it really is i'm not going to show you the back of it because it's like major spoilers so we're just going to see the spine and the front okay so quickly moving on Okay, so this next series is, uh, of course, the Ceram Wrapped, the infamous Berserk, the parental advisory sticker on it in uh, full effect here. Now, the interesting thing that I had about these series was that uh, a lot of you down in the comment sections below were like, get the deluxe editions, get the deluxe editions, and you know what? I might, it's just the only thing that I have to do is, is figure out, do I want to get the deluxe editions that don't have as much as the story uh, completed, or with these smaller editions, I get a little more of the story, or a lot more of the story so there's something to think about so coming up next is of course junji ito's infamous well i should say famous uh, story uzumaki okay now if you guys want to check on the upper right hand corner a card should appear i have a complete video done on uzumaki so if you guys want to hear my full opinion on the series uh go ahead and check that one out but this is a viz media one and done hardcover and it's absolutely brilliant i uh, can't recommend this series enough but yeah if you guys want more information and my thoughts on that go ahead and check that video out whenever you have the time. So coming up next is actually um, 
kind of an interesting series, you guys. Like, uh, I, I, there's a lot to be said, okay? Um, this one in particular, I picked up off a recommendation from a fellow manga tuber, uh, Simply G, and this is Delicious in the Dungeon, okay? So, Delicious in the Dungeon is a comedy food adventure manga and by the way the covers absolutely are brilliant so as you guys can see here this is volume one it is a yen press publication and uh yeah there's really not much else i can say on this series uh, other than the fact that i eagerly await to pick this one up so once again uh this is volume uh, two this is a yen press publication uh this was recommended to me by simply g and the folks over on reddit so thank you to both of those uh you know both of those uh parties okay so quickly moving on Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so this next series came highly recommended. This is one of the most popular ones I got recommended down in the comment sections below. And of course, I am talking about Comey Can't Communicate. This is a Viz Media publication, and what we are looking at is the spine of volume number one. Now, this is a really interesting series. Um, uh, more cute than interesting, I should say, but it follows the main character here, Comey, which is the uh, female lead, and uh, Tadano, uh, which is the male lead. Now, basically what happens is um, Comey comes off as this very pristine, uh, high class, incredibly gorgeous young woman in high school. Uh, but the thing is, is deep down inside, she really can't uh, talk to people. She has, uh, you know, she's like the world's biggest introvert and she just really just can't communicate with people until one day where Tadano actually uh, takes it upon himself to try to communicate with Comey and we now follow their adventures in to Dono's assisting Comey in her mission to get 100 friends. And it's an absolutely adorable series. If you guys want more information on this, I am about to shoot a video uh, regarding the series. So something to look forward. Quickly moving on. Okay, so continuing on, I have the next two series here, which I am very eager to read. Now, I have seen the beginning of the anime, but let's talk about Fruits Baskets, Collector's Editions, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Now, the Collector's Editions feel really good in the hand. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're really, really well-sized, in my opinion. I really like manga volumes that are this size in particular, man. It really makes it easier to read, and it just feels really good in the hand. So I have Collector's Editions, Volume volumes one and two. If I still like the series after volume two, which I'm sure I will because I've seen a little bit of the anime, I will complete the collection of having all of these uh, collector's editions. So uh, let me know down in the comment sections below if you guys have the entire collection of Fruits Baskets and what your opinion on of the series. Okay, so quickly moving on. Uh, let's see what we have coming on next. Okay, so this is one of my absolute favorites of 2019 and I have done a dedicated video to this. So you should see the card of the upper right hand corner of the screen of course i am talking about the way of the house husband volume one now like i said before this is one of my absolute favorites of 2019 this is written by kosuke ono and it is a comedy now when i say it is a comedy i really did laugh and i highly recommend you guys checking that one out so if you want more information go ahead and check out my video continuing on here we are with 20th century boys now i can't speak too much on this series because i really haven't started to read it but this is of course written by Naomi. Yoke Urasawa, and I have heard nothing but great things about this series. Now, let me know down below in the comment sections if uh, you guys have any thoughts, comments, questions, or concerns regarding 20th Century Boys, um, but I very am, uh, very much am uh, looking forward to jumping into this series. Here we are with volume two of 20th Century Boys, and this one seems to revolve around musicians in San Francisco, and I just... You know, when I read the back of it, I was like, I had to pick this one up. So if I still like the series after the second volume, I will continue on with it. Okay, so quickly moving on. Okay, okay, here we are with our first music manga of the night. Now this is 
Become You. This is done by the same author as Orange, and this series follows Tadano here on the front is the main character and Hikari on the back. Now, there is an interesting dynamic between the two, but I have a dedicated video on this wonderful Seven Seas Productions. So if you guys want my full thoughts on the series, go ahead and check that video out. A card should appear in the upper right-hand corner. I highly recommend you check that video out whenever you have the time, but this is a wonderful Seven Seas Production. Currently, there's only one volume out, but I very much do recommend this series. It's absolutely beautiful. Moving on, this is Secretly I've Been Suffering About Being Sexless, and this is yet another video I have a completely dedicated video on. Rather, I should say another series I have a completely dedicated video on. And uh, this is surprisingly wholesome, but I would still recommend this if you are 18 and over because it does cover a lot, a lot of adult topics. Now, this is a Yen Press publication, and I do recommend it. So go ahead and check that video out. You should have seen a card pop up in the upper right-hand corner. So go ahead and check that video out whenever you have the time. So quickly moving on, when I picked up this Kodansha series, uh, I only have one volume, but of course I am going to be talking about, in one second here, I'm going to be talking about happiness. Now, happiness really did remind me of one of my all-time favorite series, which is Tokyo Ghoul. Although it doesn't follow ghouls more as vampires, I really did get the Tokyo Ghoul vibes from reading the back. Now, if you guys have any information on happiness, go ahead and leave it down below in the comment sections. I would love to hear your thoughts on this series. I have yet to read this one, so more to come on happiness, okay? Right, so this next series we're going to be talking about is one of my absolute favorite anime series, Kids on the Slope. Now, notice I said anime, not manga. That is because the manga is put out by Milky Way Publications. And Milky Way, I don't think, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they do anything in English. Consequently, that means that the manga itself never got an English publication. As unfortunate as that is, you guys can head over to Crunchyroll right now. You don't have to be like me and get the Blu-ray that you see over there on the right-hand side. You guys can watch this on Crunchyroll, so I highly recommend this series. Now, this series takes place in the late 60s to early 70s, and it focuses on a drummer and a piano player. And of course, of course, like every other series, there has to be the girl, always the girl. And it's absolutely wonderful. Of course, if you guys know anything about me um, in college, jazz and music had a lot to do with my college career. And this series quickly jumped up to be my favorite of all time music anime series. So quickly moving on. Ah, we have come to this time of the video, my friends. Let's talk about really quickly, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Volumes one through 10, I believe. Yes, one through 10. Okay, so this story follows the adventures of Abel Crinell, which you'll see right now on the cover of volume one. He is on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we have the goddess or the head of the family, Hestia. Now, this is a very interesting series. Expect a full video on it. I have seen the entire anime series. Um, by the way, I did not expect to like this series. I really didn't, but Yen Press really did pull through, and uh, I have to admit this is uh, really, truly a joy to read. Uh, once I am completely caught up with the series, expect a full video on it. Now, this is an interesting character. This is uh, um, Ais Wallstein, I believe. Now, I may have just butchered her name right there, but she, of course, is the girl that... Uh, Bell Crinell will eventually probably get, you know, I don't think that spoilers, it's very apparent with, uh, within the first episode or the first few pages of the actual manga series, but it's actually a really cool series. I highly recommend it. Early on in the series, we find out that Bell Crinell has pretty much the unique ability to improve and get stronger at a rapid rate. Now, you might think it's OP, which it might be later on in the series, but right now there's this interesting dynamic going on where uh, since Bell was so weak in the beginning of the series, he really is playing catch-up ball, and it's just an overall brilliantly done series, in my opinion, despite the name. Now, if you guys are thinking there for a second that this is a trashy series and it's just filled with etchiness and so on and so forth, well, you know, you wouldn't be wrong about the edginess. I mean, there is, you know, quite a few edgy scenes, but I mean, come on, I, mean, I, got, nothing, I got nothing against that. I mean, don't, uh, you know, don't got to tell me twice for a good time. But uh, yeah, th you know, I think that the plot itself really can stand on its own and the edginess doesn't get away uh, in the way of the actual storyline. And I highly, highly, highly recommend either watching or reading uh, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? So quickly moving on.
Okay, so it's that time of the night to get into Inio Asano, and of course I am talking about Solanin. This will be the first Asano works that I actually jump into. This is a Viz Media publication, and it is a one and done. Now, I have yet to actually jump into this one, but I am very, very excited. Now, this follows the adventures of a recent college graduate and her boyfriend as they try and struggle throughout life and where they fit and what is the purpose of how they actually fit into society, okay? I could not be more interested in reading the series, more to come, expect a video on Solden and Soon. Quickly moving on. Okay, so this series I wish I had more to say on, but unfortunately I am just now starting Volume 1, and of course I am talking about the wonderful Makoto Yukimura's Vinland Saga. Now, if you guys want to watch the anime for this, I do know that Amazon Prime, if you have Amazon Prime, you can go ahead and watch uh, Season 1, which is airing currently right now in December uh, 2019. Uh, but what I know so far about this series is that it follows the adventures of Thorfinn and uh, company. So I I know that it follows Vikings and that there's plenty of character development within this story, which I absolutely love. I really do love. And I've heard nothing but great things about this. I wish I could tell you guys more, but I haven't started it. This is going to be one of the first a series that I start in 2020, but I haven't just quite yet. Now, of course, we just now looked at volume two. Let's look at volume three. And all of these volumes, of course, are hardcovers put out by uh, Kodansha. And they feel amazing in the hands. They look amazing on the shelves and I cannot wait to display them proudly on my manga bookshelf when I get that all sorted out. Now once I do get current with this series, now I have all the way up to volume 10 and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that volume 11 just came out. I could be wrong with that. It's either It either just came out or it's about to come out. You guys in the comment section down below, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on Vinland Saga and let me know also if volume 11 is already out because I will definitely pick that one up and once I get current with this series, I will be the first one to, uh, I have several video ideas on Vinland Saga already uh, that I have written down, so I cannot wait to jump uh, into those. But right now, let's and just enjoy looking at the rest of the covers of Vinland Saga. Okay, so this next series we're going to be talking about, of course, is Master Keaton. Now, Master Keaton revolves around Tai Chi. Tai Chi is born of Japanese and British descent and is a former SAS agent with remarkable skills in military tactics and archaeology. Now, Keaton is a world history teacher part-time in Japan, uh, but actually goes international when issues arrive and is called upon by someone in London of Special Insurance Investigations. Now, of course, Master Keaton is a Viz publication, and I cannot wait to jump into it but that's about all I have on Master Keaton so if you guys have any thoughts on Master Keaton in this series in general go ahead and leave those down below now I only have two volumes volume one and volume two as you can see uh, right here uh, but I know that there's more out the only hiccup I have with Master Keaton is that they are kind of expensive volumes so I will have to pick them up uh, probably at a slower rate than most others but they look absolutely beautiful and they I mean just look at the background Right here. Are you kidding me right now? The, the attention to detail and the actual size and thickness of these manga volumes are something to be said for. So this is Master Keaton. We are looking at the final spine here on volume number two. Of course, it's written by another series yet by uh, Naoki Urasawa. So let me know down below what your thoughts are on Master Keaton. Quickly moving on to a series that this is another one that I have to start, boys, but something I am very interested in starting uh, is Monster. Monster. 
So here we go with yet another Urwasawa series. This one follows the adventures of Dr. Kenzo Tenma. Now, from my understanding, at the beginning of the series, he chooses or is rather told to save someone's life over another, uh, and everything goes fine uh, until he decides to stand his ground the second time around and chooses to save, uh, I guess, someone else instead of the mayor's son. Now, that's when everything kind of goes awry in the series. Other than that, I really don't know too much more of what happens in this series, but all I know is that I've heard nothing but great things about Monster, and that there is an anime for it that is actually pretty good too, but of course I'm going to read the manga before I actually watch the anime series. So let me know down below in the comment sections what your thoughts are on Monster. What should I expect? Did you like it? Didn't you like it? Uh, let me know. I'm, I'm very curious. Let's have that conversation down below in the comment section. So quickly moving on. Okay, boys, it's that time of the night. We are going to jump into one of my favorite series out of 2019, uh, which is Dr. Stone. Okay, uh, this is volume one of Dr. Stone, and if you guys aren't hip to Dr. Stone, it follows the adventures of Senku and friends. Now, Senku, you can see here clearly on the cover of a volume one, he is a genius that awakens in a world that has been turned to stone after thousands and thousands of years of being asleep or, I guess, petrified in stone. Stone. And essentially, it is his job, along with the select few companions that he has, to sort of rebuild civilization and use the power of science to get us back to where we are in present day technology and medicine. Now, of course, the antagonist of the series currently right now is Asukasa, who is pretty much on the other end of the fence, where Senku, on one hand, wants to revive everyone and get it back to exactly how it was and believes that there was nothing in inherently wrong with the world as it was. Sukasa only wants to bring back people that were not violent or that were not, I guess, in any way, shape, or form evil. He uses the word evil a lot. I don't want to say violent because it seems that everyone that uh, Sukasa uh, sort of brings uh, back to life is, of course, uh, violent by nature. Although, I don't want to do spoilers or anything like that, but there's something to be said. Um, I, I could go further, but I don't want to do any more spoilers than what I already have. So currently we are looking at the spine of volume five. Of course, these are a Viz Media publication uh, on Shonen Jump. So if you guys want to go ahead, you guys could uh, get up to date entirely with this series on the Viz Media app. If you guys have a subscription to that, uh, if you don't, I highly recommend it. But of course, this is the spine of volume six. Uh, we have, I think, two more to go here. I highly recommend Dr. Stone. And if you don't want to read the manga, the anime is really, really, really good too. The music and the voice acting overall just absolutely amazing. This has to be one of my favorite shonens. It's not my number one, no, uh, but not my number two either, but probably sliding into number three of favorite shonen of all time. Okay, so this is the most recent volume that came out at the end of December, Volume 8. I am almost done with Volume 8, and one I am fully caught up with all of the chapters, so that includes the ones that are on the Viz Media app. I will have a video coming up on Dr. Stone. So let me know what your thoughts are on that series down below. I am eager to have that discussion with you guys and quickly moving on to my, well, as you guys can see here, uh, this is Demon Slayer, and this is tied for my second favorite shonen of all time. Demon Slayer came in with a bang here in 2019 with an amazing anime. Uh, right now, I believe that there is some controversy going on with Demon Slayer because it is tying, or is not tying, I think it actually beat uh, One Piece uh, with like overall sales for 2019 in manga, although there's a bunch of controversy with that because uh, a lot of people bought like the entire collection of uh, Demon Slayer as opposed to single volumes of just what came out this year with One Piece. Uh, so it, it's kind of skewed in favor of Demon Slayer, but needless to say, there was a surge of popularity for this series, and I highly, highly recommend it, whether it be the anime or the manga. This is really, truly one of my all-time favorite shonen so far that I have I have discovered. And just like uh, 
if uh, Dr. Stone, you guys can go ahead and find this one on the Viz Media app if you don't have the space or the money to collect it currently right now. Of course, this is the last one I have, Volume 5. There are more out there, but all I have is Volume 5. So let me know what your thoughts are on Demon Slayer down below. This is one of the most requested ones that I would buy uh, this year. So quickly moving on, here we are, the one that's tied for second with Demon Slayer. This is Hunter Hunter. Now, I can go on and on and on of how great Hunter Hunter is, but all I'm going to say is while I saw the last episode of the anime, I quickly ordered five volumes of Hunter Hunter. Now, if you guys want to hear a wonderful pitch and just overall someone that's incredibly passionate about the series, I highly recommend you guys go check out Manga X Hunter. He is a wonderful manga tuber here in the community, and he just put out a video, which I will link down below, on why uh, Hunter Hunter is his favorite series or a favorite shonen of all time, and uh, a little bit about the series, and he gives a wonderful synopsis. But for those that don't want to watch that video, the basic, basic, basic synopsis on this is... We have Gon, who is the main character, and he is looking to find his father. Now, fun fact, uh, this series is written by Togashi, who is the same author as Yu Yu Hakusho. So if you like Yu Yu Hakusho, consider giving Hunter Hunter a shot if you haven't heard of it already. Now, another fun fact that I hear about Togashi is that he actually married uh, the author of Sailor Moon. So that's, uh, you know, quite the mangaka family there, in, in my opinion. So this is Hunter Hunter. It is tied for second in my favorite shonen of all time. Number one, I'm keeping hidden right now because I have a huge video coming out on what my number one favorite shonen is, but I don't want to say too much more on that. So that was Hunter Hunter. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on those series down below. Now, enjoy some B-roll of my entire top shelf and bottom shelf as we continue on into the next part of this series here. Okay, you guys, so this is when we're going to start talking about Tokyo Ghoul, written by Sue Ishida. Now, this one is very near and dear to my heart. If you guys watch my most recent uh, manga haul, of course, links down below for those. If you guys want to go ahead and watch uh, either the December one or the most recent one that I did in the later half of December, I highly uh, encourage you guys to go watch those ones. Oh, here's Toka on volume two. Uh, best girl for me personally, but let's talk about Tokyo Ghoul for a second. Okay, so Tokyo Ghoul fo follows the adventure of... Kaneki, who you just saw in Volume 1, and Toka and company. Uh, so Kaneki is the male lead, Toka is the female lead. And this is a very interesting story, of course. Now, I'll, like a lot of people, I'm going to go ahead and agree that the original 14 volumes, I believe it's 13 or 14, maybe it's 14, I'm pretty sure it's 14, uh, the original series itself, Tokyo Ghoul, not Tokyo Ghoul Re, is really, really good. I highly encourage you guys to check those out. Now, I'm also personally a fan of Tokyo Ghoul Re, although that one is still coming out in Takaban format. We have three more uh, volumes to go until it's completely released in English in physical copies, but you guys can go ahead and get completely caught up with the entire series on the Viz Media app. Okay, so there's a lot of series here that you guys don't have to collect if you guys don't have the space or the money to collect. You guys can go ahead and check those out in their entirety or until current on the Viz Media app. Okay, so it's a total steal. I highly encourage you guys to go check that one out. But Tokyo Ghoul follows the adventures of... Kaneki and Toka. So let's talk about Kaneki for a second. In the very beginning of the story, Kaneki basically goes out on a date that he thought is super cute for the longest of time and while they are out on the date she actually gets him cornered and reveals to him that she is indeed a ghoul. Now in the process of pretty much eating him uh, as disgusting as that sound uh, the ghoul itself has to disengage uh, for Kaneki. I'm not going to say why because it's spoilers but uh, we end up, uh, Kaneki Kaneki ends up surviving, you know, to, you know, just to kind of wrap things up, uh, Kaneki ends up surviving. Now, the next morning, of course, we get the story of him waking up and, of course, something is different about him, okay? So, of course, uh, he can't, you know, eat normal food and humans start to smell mighty appealing and so on and so forth. And it, it's really quite the interesting series, okay? And it kind of struggles with, uh, we get to see the main character struggle with, with uh, what it means to be human. And we get to see empathy on what, on the human side and being a ghoul because Kaneki is in the unique place, first time ever, where he's half ghoul and half human. He's the first one to ever be that. So it's very, very interesting in the dynamic of, of how Sue Ishida kind of portrays Kaneki as a character and then the rest of the amazing cast 
I, it's truly a wonderful series and I highly recommend it. So here we are with volume 10. Now, as you guys can tell, the color is really popping on this volume. I mean, look at this orange, it really does pop. Now, of course, I am having to layer these in front of Vinland Saga. I know, don't kill me, you guys. This is only temporary. Eventually, I will be able to display all of this, uh, all of my manga volumes uh, very neatly and proudly. But for right now, this is how, you know, this is the space that I have, I, you know, to come full circle of what I was mentioning a second ago. This is, you know, I'm doing what I can uh, with the space that I have currently, although I will have a new bookshelf. Uh, eventually in early, early, early uh, 2020. But so to come back on topic of Tokyo Ghoul, I highly, highly recommend it. Now in a second here, uh, we're gonna complete the original series. Here we are with volume 13. I believe this is the penultimate volume of Tokyo Ghoul. And we are about to jump into Tokyo Ghoul Re. Now, Tokyo Ghoul Re is a box of worms itself. So what I'm going to go ahead and say is my ultimate advice, if you guys want to enjoy the Tokyo Ghoul series, is enjoy it as a manga, not the anime. Because this is where I see a lot of the... How should I say? This This is where a lot of the hate of the series kind of comes from, is is from the, the anime series itself. And I believe that Funimation really did drop the ball on Tokyo Ghoul, okay? The, you know, the first season was pretty good. It's In fact, it's what got me to buy the rest of the series, but... Yeah, they really did drop the ball on, you know, the rest, the entire rest of the series, okay? Now, this is partially in part due to, you know, Sue Ishida kind of getting, I don't want to say fed up with the series towards the end, and, you know, a lot of people claim that he has a rushed ending. I don't believe that. I believe that, you know, and I read somewhere that he actually was having health problems and he was just sort of, he just needed to end the series. And it was very apparent towards the end of Tokyo Ghoul Re, but it did end on a note that I really, really did like. I really did like it. And I really encourage you guys to check out Tokyo Ghoul Re. Now, one thing I did find that was very, very interesting down in the comment section below of when my last manga haul, this was the sort of gateway series to a lot of people getting in further into the community of the anime manga community. Now, that's very interesting because, I, you know, like I said before, uh, I share the same story. So I find it very interesting that Tokyo Ghoul is sort of the gateway manga series uh, to the rest of the community. So, you know, on that, you know, basis alone, you know, you got to give Tokyo Ghoul credit and it is amazingly well done. The art, amazing. The characters that Sue Ishida creates in the series are absolutely just interesting. And moreover, just like the dynamic between them, absolutely phenomenal. The whole plot line itself really sort of just sucks you in. And I have nothing but great things to say about Tokyo Ghoul. The anime, you know, okay, you know, the anime, I really didn't like except for the first season. So we will have to, you know, Funimation did drop the ball. But please go ahead and check out Tokyo Ghoul, okay? The manga. So let's go ahead and enjoy some B-roll for the rest of these volumes and continuing on. Okay, you guys, so this is the last series we have of the night, and this one I absolutely love. I read this at quite an interesting time in my life, and of course I am talking about the Ancient Magus Bride, okay? So, as you can see here, this is volume one of the Ancient Magus Bride, and this is the spine of Ancient Magus Bride. This is a Seven Seas production, and it's an absolutely oddly wonderful story. Now, on the right-hand side of the volume, you see here our main protagonist, the female lead, uh, Chise, and of course, on the right-hand side of volume number two here, we have the male lead, which is Ainsworth. Now, there is a odd romance that begins between the two, but this is categorized not as a shoujo, but as a seinen, as a lot of my viewers have commented down below in the in the, uh, in the comment section on one of my videos that uh, Ancient Magus Bride actually made its debut here on the channel. So I didn't actually know it was a seinen, but it actually is a seinen, which, which makes sense. So if you are interested about the series, let's talk about it just for one hot second, okay? So this is very much a medieval 
slash magic slash science slash mystery and it's 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 a very weird series but i love it i love it to death it was it's it's honestly addicting to read now i'm not fully caught up with it um, in fact, I've actually only seen the anime and I have yet to go past the anime. Now, one thing I don't like about this series is that it's on a very slow release schedule. So it has nothing to do with the actual plot line, uh, but it, it has to do with the actual Seven Seas release schedule. Now, I don't know if that has to do with the author uh, themselves or Seven Seas publications. I don't know. If someone could answer that down below in the comment section, I would be really interested to find that out. But this series is really really, really good. I highly recommend it. Now, a lot of you probably already know about the Ancient Magus Brides, but for the select few that don't, let me be the one to recommend you guys Ancient Magus Bride. Now, if, if you aren't into shoujo, but you want something that's a little weird with a good amount of romance into it, but mostly it's like a cerebral seinen with a little bit of romance, but mostly mystery and magic and adventure, this is going to be the one for you, and it's absolutely wonderful. Now, I have volumes 1 through 10. We're looking at the spine of volume 7 right here. I know that volume 11 is going to come out soon or it just came out or not volume 11. I'm sorry. I have volumes 1 through 11 and I think volume 12 is going to come out soon. That sounds more correct to me. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is volume 8. Guys, the artwork on the series absolutely phenomenal in both the manga and the anime. And on the anime, the music is absolutely amazing too. The entire sound design on the series, class act. Truly, it was a class act and it was an incredible anime series to watch. Now, I know what you're saying. How could she say this adorable redhead have like sort of this uh, romantic relationship with Ainsworth, who is pretty much uh, wearing an undead goat's mask? Um, and that is a... Um, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say that's not a mask. And uh, yeah, it's weird. I agree with you. It's weird. But for some reason, it works. I'm just telling you it works. So this is the final volume of the night. This is volume 11, you guys. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching. And I very much recommend you guys Ancient Magus Bride. Wow, okay, so we made it to the end, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, oh my god. Okay, so yeah, so this is it. So really quickly, in, in summary, I have those uh, manga volumes on the bookshelf, and that's gonna be a lot of fun to actually organize them once I actually do get an actual legitimate uh, bookshelf uh, here in the house uh, dedicated for all of these manga volumes that I am collecting. But until then, I think this will be a pretty okay, uh, you know, band-aid solution really quickly, okay? So that being said, before we wrap things up for the evening, or, or day, I guess. I'm so used to saying evening because most of my videos are shot uh, in the evening, but I'm actually it's actually midday right now. Um, before we wrap things up here in uh, 2019, I should say, is I have a lot of fun videos planned for you guys, okay? Um, I can't speak too much of them, but I can speak up on the general topics. There's gonna be new videos where it's travel vlogs, where I'm actually gonna be taking you to some of the really big uh, anime and manga stores here in the Los Angeles, Southern California area. Uh, we're gonna be interviewing some owners. We're gonna be maybe going on a shopping spree where let's say I have $200 and we're gonna go around the store and uh, see what I can buy, um, all the way to interviewing voice actors and so on and so forth. Now, these are voice actors in series that you definitely are familiar with uh, in the anime community, and I'm very excited to be able to sit down and talk with them, perhaps in a podcast style episode. Now, that being said, I do want to take a second and say thank you from the bottom of my heart, you guys. Everyone that has taken the time out of their day to watch my videos, comment on my videos, interact with me, subscribe to the channel, uh, support me in any way, or even those just silently watching at home. 
thank you so much. It really does mean the world to me. It seems but two and a half weeks ago, I was at 60 subs or like 57 subs, and now the channel is just growing, you know, slowly but steadily, and it's, it's incredible to watch. My watch time is like skyrocketing, and it, and it means so much to me that a lot of you guys are actually watching these videos to the end. It means the absolute world to me, and I really am gonna step up my game here in 2020 and bring you guys some content that I'm, I'm actually uh, really, really proud of. Now, that being said, if you guys wanna go ahead and support the channel, and if you guys like today's video, go ahead and uh, leave a like down below. Uh, so I know that you guys are watching, and I can continue to make more content just like this. Uh, that being said, if you guys wanna stick around for more content, uh, you guys can always hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you here in the community. So, that being said, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go get ready and jump on a plane really quick and go to the East Coast. So I will try to have this video out by Wednesday or Thursday, no promises, because I'm gonna be editing on my laptop, uh, you know, in hotel rooms and so on and so forth. So I really don't know when this video is gonna go up, but it will definitely be up before Christmas. So that being said, I gotta go get on a plane. I will see you guys later. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy New Year's from my family to yours, and I will see you in the next video. Good night, you guys.